Hi, everyone. My name is Oliver, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. In 1995, Mansfield, Texas, located just outside Fort Worth, was a town with a population of approximately 8,000. However, during this period, the city was facing growing problems similar to those plaguing nearby Fort Worth, including gang and drug-related crimes. One teenager growing up in Mansfield in 1995 was Adrian Jessica Jones. Adrian Jessica Jones was a remarkable young woman who left a mark on her community. At 16, she captivated the hearts of everyone around her with her beauty and exceptional qualities. Her dedication to her studies, strong work ethic, and passion for sports made her a role model for many. In 1995, Adrian Jessica Jones was a 16-year-old junior at Mansfield High School. From the moment she set foot on campus, she instantly became a beloved figure. Her classmates and teachers admired her for her kindness, intelligence, and infectious spirit. Adrienne thrived academically. She consistently excelled in the classroom, taking advanced honors courses that challenged her to excel. Despite her busy schedule, Adrienne dedicated at least two hours of study time each night to ensure her success. Her hard work paid off as she consistently achieved high grades. After graduating from Mansfield High School, Adrian had big plans to become a vet and help animals. In addition to excelling academically, Adrian possessed impressive athletic abilities. She was a member of the girls' soccer team and demonstrated remarkable skill and dedication on the field. However, an unfortunate injury during a game forced her to withdraw from the team temporarily. Instead of losing her passion for sports, she joined the girls' cross-country team. This decision to join the cross-country team allowed Adrian to maintain an active lifestyle and helped her get into better shape. Adrian embraced the new challenge and worked tirelessly to improve her physical fitness. Her determination and dedication paid off as she quickly emerged as a key member of the cross-country team. While pursuing her academic and athletic endeavors, Adrian Jessica Jones also managed an impressive workload outside the classroom. In addition to her studies, she worked 20 hours a week at a local fast food restaurant, Golden Fried Chicken. Adrian thrived on attention, especially from the teenage boys around Mansfield. One of her closest friends referred to her as a big flirt. She would spend at least two hours a day meticulously applying her makeup, ensuring that she looked perfect. Like most teenagers, Adrian tested her parents' boundaries despite her good nature. She had two younger brothers, and her parents were particularly protective of her. As Mansfield was undergoing changes and there was more crime in the area, her parents set a strict curfew for her on weekends a little past 9 o'clock p.m. to ensure her safety. If Adrian informed her parents of her plans, such as visiting a theme park or watching a movie, she had to present them with a ticket stub as proof. Additionally, to prevent her from sneaking out, Adrian's father decided to nail her bedroom window shut. Although it was not a common occurrence, there were a few times when she left her house in the middle of the night to meet up with her friends. On Sunday, December 3rd, 1995, Adrian received special permission from her parents to stay up late in order to have a telephone conversation with her boyfriend, Tracy Smith. Tracy was out of town with his parents for the weekend, but Adrian was eager to talk to him. However, during the phone call, Adrian's mother overheard her daughter tell Tracy that there was another call coming in. When Adrian's mother asked her the caller's identity, Adrian replied that it was David from her cross-country team. According to Adrian, David seemed to be upset about something. The following morning, Adrian's family woke up and got ready for work as usual. However, Adrian's mother became concerned when she heard Adrian's alarm going off in her bedroom. Worried about why Adrian didn't shut off her alarm, her mom went to check on her. However, when Adrian's mom entered the bedroom, Adrian was nowhere to be found, and her bed was still made. It didn't look like anyone had slept in it the night before. Adrian's mother tried to remain calm when she realized that her 16-year-old daughter had gone missing. Initially, she entertained the possibility that Adrian had embarked on a morning run, but this notion was quickly discarded upon finding her daughter's running shoes lying on the floor in the bedroom. In the past, Adrian had occasionally sneaked out of the house in the middle of the night to meet up with friends. However, Adrian had never stayed out all night before, causing her mother concern. Her parents contacted the police, worried about their daughter, not knowing that miles away, a man had made a gruesome discovery on his farm. 
at approximately 7 am on Seton Road in Grand Prairie, Texas, about 10 miles from Mansfield, a man stumbled upon a distressing discovery. While walking to his mailbox, he noticed that the gate to his property had been knocked down. Intrigued, the man ventured onto the farm, where an unexpected sight awaited him. Initially, the man mistook the lump on the ground for roadkill. However, as he approached closer, he realized that he was looking at something far more sinister. The lifeless body of a deceased teenage girl lay before him. After discovering the deceased body on the farmland, the man promptly called the police. When the police arrived at the scene, they noticed a chilling sight. The teenager had been shot twice, with gunshot wounds evident on her left cheek and her forehead. Clearly, this was an execution-style killing. Furthermore, the police officers observed that the teenager had sustained severe injuries to the head. In addition to gunshot wounds and head injuries, the police officers noticed that the teenager was covered in scrapes and bruises all over her arms and legs. These injuries were the result of her running through the barbed wire gate at the front of the farm. She had put up a desperate fight for her life. Even more disturbingly, the teenager was dressed in nightclothes, as if she had intended to go to bed, but her life took a tragic turn. The officers wondered if there was any connection to gang violence or drugs, considering the execution-style nature of the killing. After the discovery of the murdered teenager's body on the farm, the Grand Prairie Police took immediate action and sent out a teletype to all area agencies. This teletype contained the basic description of the young girl's body, including her approximate age range, height, weight, and other physical descriptions. The intent was to share this information and raise awareness, hoping another agency might have a missing person matching the victim in Grand Prairie. It was only a matter of time before the Mansfield Police contacted the Grand Prairie officers. Through their investigation, the Mansfield police were able to identify the murdered teenager as Adrian Jones. Once the police identified the deceased teenager in Grand Prairie as Adrian, the next step was to notify her worried parents about the tragic turn of events. When the police told Adrian's mother her daughter had been killed, she fell apart. Because Mansfield was a small town, it wasn't long before the news of Adrian's murder reached her classmates and friends at Mansfield High School. As news of Adrian's death spread throughout the halls, classes were stopped, and Adrian's peers cried with one another. The people of Mansfield were on edge after the discovery of Adrian Jones's murdered body in a field. Theories were swirling about what might have led to her tragic death. One prevalent idea was that she was somehow involved in drugs. Others wondered if there was possibly a serial killer lurking in their midst. Adrian's parents reported to the police the last time they had seen their daughter. Her mother provided details regarding a phone call Adrian had with her boyfriend, Tracy, as well as another teenager, David, who called in while she was on the phone. According to the mother, one of Adrian's younger brothers heard the sound of a car engine outside the house sometime after midnight. Upon looking outside, the brother observed a pickup truck leaving the scene. The police were determined to find out who this David was who called Adrian on the night she was murdered. In an effort to gather more information, they turned to Adrian's cross-country coach. Adrian's coach mentioned that there was a team member named David Graham. However, the coach expressed surprise upon learning that David would have been calling Adrian, as she had never had any reason to believe that Adrian and David had interacted. David Graham was an all-American teenager. At seven, after seeing his first air show, David told his father he wanted to become an Air Force pilot. From that moment on, he dedicated himself to achieving his dream. At Mansfield High School, David was popular and well-liked by his peers. He had a natural charisma and was always up for a good time. Many girls had caught his eye, but he was taken by a high school senior named Diane Zamora. Diane stood out from the crowd. She shared David's desire to enter the military one day and actively pursued her aspirations. In the days after Adrian's murder, the police conducted interviews with David Graham. David admitted that he had known Adrian from their time together on the cross-country team, but he insisted that their relationship had never progressed beyond acquaintances. During the interview, the police questioned David about whether he contacted Adrian on the night she was killed. He adamantly denied the allegation, stating that he had been at home studying with his girlfriend, Diane Zamora. The police conducted a thorough investigation of David, considering him a suspect in the murder of Adrian. As part of their efforts, they obtained a search warrant for his vehicle, 
a white pickup truck. However, their examination yielded no compelling evidence connecting David to Adrian's murder. Consequently, the police shifted their focus away from David and toward other potential suspects. David and Diane shared many similarities. Both had a strong affinity for the military, with Diane even joining the Naval Sea Cadet Corps and excelling in the program. Her discipline and determination mirrored that of David, making them a formidable couple. As their relationship progressed, they became more serious. In the summer of 1995, before Diane began her freshman year at the Naval Academy, David proposed to her, sealing their bond. To celebrate the occasion, Diane went to her family jeweler in nearby Arlington to have the diamond ring sized for her engagement. When the police investigated David Graham, they were unable to find any connection between him and the murder of Adrian Jones. Although they moved on to other suspects, many people around town started spreading rumors. Some speculated that Adrian might have been killed by a jealous girlfriend. The fact that David Graham had a serious girlfriend fueled these rumors. However, the police had no evidence to support these theories. David Graham appeared to be an innocent teenager who had simply known Adrian from their time together on the cross-country team. After the investigation into David Graham did not yield results, the police continued their search for Adrian's killer. They conducted interviews with people who had seen or interacted with Adrian in the days leading up to her murder. However, their efforts proved fruitless. With no new leads, Adrian's case eventually went cold. Despite the best efforts of the police, they were unable to identify a suspect in her murder. Months turned into years, and Adrian's family and friends were left devastated, searching for answers that never came. In the summer of 1996, Diane Zamora had just completed her freshman year at the Naval Academy. She returned to her hometown of Arlington, Texas, to spend time with her family. While visiting, Diane met up with some of her high school friends, including a young woman named Christy. One day, Diane decided to confide in Christy about something deeply personal. She confessed to Christy that she had been involved in the murder of a girl named Adrian Jones. Shocked and horrified by the revelation, Christy didn't know how to respond. Diane asked her not to tell anyone about what she had heard, and Christy reluctantly agreed. In the following weeks, Christy struggled with the weight of Diane's confession. Unsure of what to do, she eventually decided to confide in another friend, Heather. When Heather heard the story, she was equally shocked and concerned. The two friends knew they had to do something about the confession, but they were unsure of the best course of action. After much deliberation, Christy and Heather decided to go to the police. They recounted the story Diane had told them about her involvement in the murder of Adrian Jones. The police were stunned by the confession and knew they needed to investigate further. The investigation into Diane Zamora led the police back to David Graham. When confronted with the allegations, David initially denied any involvement in Adrian's murder. However, under the pressure of the investigation, he eventually confessed. He admitted that he and Diane had plotted and carried out the murder of Adrian Jones. According to David's confession, the motive for the murder was jealousy. Diane had become convinced that Adrian had been romantically involved with David, and she couldn't bear the thought. In a twisted and deadly act of revenge, David and Diane lured Adrian out of her house under the pretense of meeting up. Once they were alone in a secluded area, they brutally murdered her. The trial of David Graham and Diane Zamora was a highly publicized event. The details of the crime shocked the community and the courtroom was packed with spectators. Both David and Diane were found guilty of the murder of Adrian Jones and sentenced to life in prison. Adrian's family and friends were left to grapple with the tragic loss of a young woman whose life was cut short. The murder of Adrian Jones serves as a reminder of the dangers of jealousy and the devastating consequences it can have.